With sand, sun, surf, and mountains, California holds an important spot when it comes to luring travelers throughout the year. But recently, as stated by the media, California is facing major droughts, and no one knows when it's going to end. But something that makes conditions worse is flooding. Yes, California is confronting major droughts and floods, but it doesn't make any sense, right? How can droughts and floods both exist in a place? And what officials in California are regarding the situation? If all these queries are popping up in your minds, then hold your horses and make sure to watch it till the end as I'm going to tell you how a $4 billion reservoir is expected to make conditions in California better. So, let's get started. If you are new to my channel, then make sure to smash the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you never miss any future updates. Updates. Great Basin, Colorado, and the Mojave all are officially called deserts. Thus, due to large parts converting to deserts, the availability of water in California does not have enough to supply. If we have a look back in history, even back in the time almost a century ago, there was water scarcity in the region. Water levels were so low that people struggled to grow food on the land. Wistfully, the situation in California is the same, even after 100 years. But recently in the past couple of years, it got so much worse that in 2021, Governor of California, Gavin Newsom announced a drought emergency statewide and asked individuals urgently to reduce water usage by 15%. That shows how critical the situation was back then. But unfortunately, this drought emergency is still going on for more than 1,000 days, as even after more than 17 months in 2023, no one knows when this emergency will be lifted. This was one side of California's story, but the other side will surely shock you. As I have mentioned, California has been facing drought for more than 1,000 days now. But during this period, there was a time when record-breaking rainfall happened in California, resulting in floods. Another state of emergency was proclaimed as 22 people were killed. Cities, houses and towns, and everything was damaged. But how can droughts and floods both exist in a place? How can a place face two different emergencies quite different from each other? Well, the simple answer is the inaccessibility of proper water management. When California has a spell of heavy rainfall, the water rushes down to cities and towns due to a lack of water storage systems and causes destruction and eventually water flows toward the sea. When there is a hot sun, most of the water has already flown away from the land to sea and drought continues. That's what is happening in California. There is a repetitive cycle. It starts with periods of more rain leading to floods, flood water running towards the sea. Then during hot days, there is less water left leading to drought. In short, they are not accomplishing storing rainwater according to their needs and instead seesaw back and forth with drought, floods, drought, floods again and again. But what's the state doing to stop this situation in California? Back in the 1950s, California was in a similar condition as it is today, and the state established the state water project known as SWP. The major aim of this design was to store as much water as possible in reservoirs after heavy spells of rainfall. One of the major reservoirs is Lake Oroville, with a height of more than 200 meters, it's the largest known in the whole of America. This reservoir is holding hundreds of millions of cubic meters of water. The second big name is Pyramid Lake outside Los Angeles. Through this impressive and massive network of canals, pumping stations and aqueducts, water is allowed to move across several kilometers crossing mountain ranges including California. During the span of drought, the water which is stored in these reservoirs can be supplied across farms and houses. This project was expected to make things better for California overall, but during the construction during the 1960s and 1970s, it was only completed in the initial stage. Even in the 90s and 80s, there were plans to add new canals and dams, but unfortunately, they all got cancelled or delayed. But why? Well, there were several reasons for this. Firstly, the cost of building a whole network of canals and dams was so high, and the economy of California at that time was not very well. Secondly, there were many concerns about the environmental crisis. With the construction of these reservoirs, the natural flow of water was estimated to be disrupted and local species were considered to be at risk with all those construction and dams getting in ways the fish can't reach the rivers. Due to all these scenarios that possibly can happen, Californian officials decided to stop further progress in this project. This system that was developed initially was expected to provide enough water to the urban areas and the remaining water was supplied for irrigating orchards and farms. And collectively, the system provided $400 billion to the state's economy. But the situation got worse when the population of California exceeded a higher pace and part of the SWP existing in the city is now struggling to make both ends meet. As stated by the executive director of the California Farm Water Coalition, our water demands have increased far beyond what the system was designed to support. In addition to all this, increasing temperature is not helping these reservoirs. With a two degree rise in temperature over the years, 
droughts are getting worse. And that's the reason now the state has decided that it needs an hour to build site reservoirs. On the official website, the whole new project is defined as an environmentally beneficial off-river reserve that will capture excess water from major storms and save it for drier periods. So what will be the location of this reservoir? According to reports, in the north of Sacramento is a narrow valley with cliffs and hills along the sides. There are few buildings with few local people. The state wants to flood the valley so that it can be transformed into a lake shortly. It was on the plains since the 1950s, but the state was not quite sure as it was costing $4 billion. But now they have changed their mind and are ambitious to complete it. Even though it's very costly, it's worth the cost as it will certainly help in the betterment of the condition. This lake will be able to store two cubic kilometers of water, which will be enough to provide hundreds and thousands of Californian homes. So how will it be built? In the first phase, between the edges of the valley, new dams will be built for plugging any gap between the valley. On the eastern side of the valley sites, Dam and Golden Gate Dam will be built. In addition to these large dams, there are dams designed to be built in the north of the valley. The main plan is to convert the valley into a massive waterproof tub. But how will this valley be filled with a huge quantity of water? The next phase of construction, it's mainly going to be achieved through damming the river and waiting for water to flood the area. The same technique was used in filling the Oroville Dam. Moreover, during regular spells of heavy rain, the rainwater will keep on adding to the lake, making use of that water level. But the situation in Sites Valleys is a bit different as it's not surrounded by any major river. As the Sacramento River is situated in the east, about 25 kilometers away from the valley, it is planned that during the rainy season, water will be sucked out from the river and will be transferred into the Sites Valley through pipes. Even though it will help in solving the water crisis, transferring water from the river to the valley will require a huge amount of power and energy. But experts believe that it's going to be worth it, as there will be the availability of water during droughts and secondly, when water will be released from reservoirs, it will pass through hydroelectric generators that will provide 80% of the power that will be used to pump the water. The project is expected to be started in 2024 or 2025 and will be finished in 2030 or 2031 in a year. Unfortunately, during heavy rainfall in 2023, much water was rushed to rivers and if the site reservoir had been up and working, it would have stored enough water for the rest of the year. But is this project free of drawbacks? It's very early to say anything regarding the drawbacks of the project. Experts are saying that due to increased prices, the SWP will raise the price of water by 300%, but till now the state has not confirmed this. Many environmentalists are also saying that this will disrupt the natural species under the sea. But SWP has announced that the water from the reservoir will be used to breed and support local species during hot, dry summers. Still, it's not sure whether it's going to be built or it will remain just in papers and documents as funding needed for this project is not raised. So it's the end of my video here. Tell us in the comment what you think about the project. Is it a good addition in California? Will it ever be completed? Make sure to give a thumbs up and don't forget to share this with your friend living in California.